Hello and welcome to the Sam Mobile Podcast. I'm your host Ben from Sam Mobile and welcome to episode 11 of your weekly Sam Mobile Podcast where we give you the roundup of all the latest hot topics in the world of Samsung and this is going to be definitely a juicy one. As the title says, we're getting straight into it where we possibly have alleged live leaked images of the upcoming Z Fold 4. As we talked about it previously, for all the information we knew in terms of the leaks and the rumors, in episode 8, whew, we're seeing some in-person live images, allegedly, of the device. And also, what that could mean in terms of the specs of the performance for what we know of the upcoming Fold 4 as well. And also, for the fans out there, the fan edition might not make the cut this year when it comes to the S22. That's going to be an interesting point of discussion. And as always, we do have another guest. And it's probably not even a guest. It's as good as a co-host at this point. And as always, it makes it more fun, more bearable for me, and especially for you as our audience and listeners. And as always, as I like to say, get your popcorn, get your milk, get your drinks, because it's going to be a good show for sure. And yes, George is back, people. And you know he's as good as my co-host now at this rate, and he's a lifesaver as per usual. Uh, we're recording this, uh, I believe it's on the fifteenth, right? On on a Wednesday. Yeah, it is. It's the fifteenth. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's on the fifteenth. I'm still not back in the UK, people, until next week. So bear with me. We are still working remotely, and it's hopefully been okay as we did last week. Uh, George, again, thank you for coming on to episode eleven. And um, how have you been? How are you? Well, thanks as always for having me on. As you know, once I've started talking about tech, I really don't stop. So if anything, <laughs> if the viewers at home are just lucky that they don't have to listen to the uncut version of this, because <laughs> you'd think that an hour long podcast takes roughly an hour to record. We've been here for four hours already and we've we've just gotten through the intro. <laughs> but I'm doing good things. How are you? <laughs> Oh man, I'm alright. I'm 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 just fighting time difference in terms of making sure that the content is pushed out. And I'm on I'm on zombie mode right now. But the show must go on. And honestly, you being here as per usual makes me happy. Makes it much more enjoyable because you always bring a different perspective to all things related to Samsung. And as our viewers know, definitely you've got us on all your favorite podcasts and platforms. Follow us, like, subscribe, give us a rating. And also turn the notifications so you don't miss any future live episodes when it happens straight away. So you're really, really looking forward to that. And let's get straight into it, man. Let's not waste any much time because this is big stuff. And we are pretty much going to be talking about live apparent. And I, I say this for protection reasons. Like we've, we've got to put disclaimers out there and just protect ourselves. So these are on on on. Unless there's an official announcement of an unpacked event for these foldable devices, right? Take whatever you're going to be seeing here with a large disclaimer and a large grain of salt, right? Because things can always be different months down the line. But from what we're seeing right now, and we discussed this previously in episode eight, earlier than expected, we are seeing apparent live leaked images of the Flip 4. And... um. It's just gonna transition here. You've you've probably got the article in front of you, and this was two days ago, right? On a Monday, where this is literally breaking news, and we've literally had this on the Sam Mobile website. Um, I think Tech Talk TV had it first initially on his YouTube channel and socials, and it's something that we've picked up from before. And this is literally what we suspected to see um, from our suspicions of not much changed, <laughs> right? Not much has changed in terms of what we're seeing right now, but it is uh, it, it 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 opens up another discussion of leaks in general. You know, not even just what's being revealed right now, but just leaks in general. And yes, it's a cultural thing for the tech industry, especially for consumer electronics. But I'll let you take over this, and I'll just give my two cents on it. But how how does it look to you what we're seeing so far with these apparent? leaked images of the flip four and just what your mind is with leaks at the minute and how they are yeah so the, the flip four looks like it's going to be a fairly iterative step there's nothing as far as we can tell so far major about it um what's interesting to me though is the the flip in all this time hasn't really gotten any competition like there's the motorola razor and that's basically it 
Yes. Like a lot of companies mm-hmm. have gone for the fold style of foldable, which is interesting to me because I think personally, as much as I love the fold, I do see the yeah, flip same. as the one that's more likely to get that traction and sell more units. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's interesting to me that no one else has jumped in on that. In terms of leaking it in general, that I've I I have this weird dichotomy in that there's a part of me. There's the tech nerd that wants to know everything as early as possible, but loves it. There's, right? There's a part mm-hmm. of me that's like, oh, I know what the new flip's going to look like and no one else does. <laughs> but I am also abundantly aware of the fact that the general public doesn't really care. Like, yeah. we her, we knew basically everything about any feature that any phone has come out with, generally speaking, there have been like, like, you know, a couple of like minor bits and pieces that we've maybe missed. But the iPhone 10, that massive redesign was probably the last time we were really properly gazumped. And even that was only yeah. because Apple had gone so far as to create a completely fake iPhone 10. And Mm-mm-mm-mm. it's weird because even then, you know, there'd be features or things that companies tout as massive new things that you know we'd known about for ages and then even even the original fold that was kind of known it was coming for for a while and for a while yeah yeah even now if you you know we're three generations deep if i whip out a fold there's no way that if i'm in a group of like 10 random people off the street like five of them are like Mm. oh my god what's that Right, as much even yeah, though yeah, it's yeah, Sam- yeah. the marketing machine that is Samsung, it's a phone that has actually been out for four years now, more or less. Mm-hmm. Even then, there's just ge- the general public just doesn't seem to notice things like that. They see the very yeah. much the the mainstream, heavily the mainstream, marketed stuff, the traditional, whatever. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. there is there's the argument that companies make of like oh my God, all these leaks mean that we can't tell the story we want with the products. And Mm -hmm. they sort of take the wind out of our sails, both literally (laughs) and figuratively, actually. Now when I think about it, that was a great, I didn't realize I was making that that double, but I'll take it. (laughs) Um, But I think that the the reality is that outside of the likes of you and me, no one actually cares. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But you see, you, you say the tech nerd in you, I don't know whether it's the tech nerd in me, but I'm I'm the opposite where I think I just still like being surprised by tech. Like a kid at Christmas, getting new stuff. I think I'm still in that mode, right? Here's, here's why I say that. 13th of June, let's just say 13th of June, um, if we're going by the same timeline of what, what was announcement in terms of the Fold 3 and the Flip 3 last year, it was, you know, first week of August and then availability was third week of August, right? This is two months early. <laughs> yeah. Two months early is a decent amount of time for something like this to pretty much come up and rear its head, right? And and it's it's just one of those things where uh, it, it's part of it. It is part of it. And as an entity, Samsung just honestly being so big to this point and also just how they mass release products how they try to work early with, you know, carrier networks and obviously um, different partners and retailers. This tends to happen. This tends to happen, right? And it's just happening too frequently to the point where I'm like, oh, not again, right? My mind is like, not again, you know? It, it doesn't take away from me being excited to see an unpacked event. I still think they need to go back to the point where the unpacked event gets done before the embargo for articles and videos by journalists and influencers needs to be put. I just don't understand why it's at the same time because there's some little details in the unpacked events that, you know, Rere said that is, you know, really nice to know. Like I would say more recently this year, when we had the briefings on the new Galaxy S22 series and the new Tab series, no one knew about the four years of software updates, Yeah, right? That was something that was in unpacked. You know, so it's those little things where it's like you still need to add and give weight and value to your keynote events, right? So I'm of the old school mindset where maybe it's the kidding kidding me of like the kid at Christmas always getting new tech where I don't actually want to know everything beforehand. I want to be surprised, <laughs> right? So when I see this, I'm like, oh, just 
No, not again. Away from that, though, I'll go back to your original point about the competition, like wholehearted competition. Obviously, Huawei have the P50 pocket, right? But again, no GMS, no Google services. It's not a real competition. And again, it lacks certain innovative features off head. I stand corrected if I'm wrong. Things like having a flex hinge where it can actually hold itself at different angles because that that is such a a difference maker into into the hands free experience of how you use it. Right. So you are right. It is just the razor for Motorola. But I think, in my opinion, the lack of competition has probably what is caused it to allegedly not be that much of a step up in terms of design R and D. You know, because why would you? I'm in a I'm in a position where, you know, things are a bit strange in terms of component shortages, acquisitions, and assembly. Then to put that extra money into R and D when you don't really need to. If I was Samsung, I would probably do the same from a business standpoint. But do you think that opens up room for complacency at any given point now? Even though a year is not that long, is this opening up room for complacency for Samsung? What we want at the end of the day is for every company, you know, be it Samsung or whoever, to be making the absolute best device they can. They should, we, we want mm -hmm. them to be stretching themselves to really make incredible devices because that's how we get, you know, these incredible ideas. Like Samsung, there's obviously a reason Samsung made the Z Flip and Z Fold. And it's because they saw the opportunity to push themselves and to make a device that up until recently, no one else could make. And mm -hmm. this level of complacency, you know, it's what led Intel into the situation where they are in currently. Because you see, can, what you, you don't get is you can't, you can't, you, companies forget that you can't just turn it back on again. You can't decide yeah. that actually next year we're going to make a great phone. It takes time. Yep, 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 because yep. if you've been sitting yep. around doing nothing for three years, mm -hmm. in that fourth year mm -hmm. where you're like, oh, damn, we actually have to make a really good phone now. Because you haven't tried mm -hmm. in three years, you've forgotten how to actually, you know, push for boundaries Try. and where you can... Push for boundaries, yeah. yep. Yep. And yep, so you yep, you yep. run that risk of, you know, this year, next year, it may be fine. But if... A and I think we are actually seeing it with the Z Fold a little bit, because I think mm -hmm. there are better foldable devices out there by yeah, yeah, manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the reason that, that Samsung have kind of gotten away with it, with the Fold, is that they aren't really widely available in the UK. They're basically the only foldable option outside of China. And because of that, mm -hmm. they've kind of... I would argue that the, the Oppo Find N is a better foldable device. It has a smaller crease. It's more usable with one hand. When you unfold it, it's mm. automatically in landscape mode, which is the way round mm. you want it anyway. And Samsung have shown mm. that the Z Fold might end up trending in that direction, not necessarily in size, mm -hmm. but in the, the aspect ratio, potentially. There have been leaks that they might be yeah. tweaking it slightly. And yeah. I think that's why. People have shown that, you know, that's kind of what we want. But because there's no major competition, there's no need for these sort of massive redesigns or to yeah, push the yeah. boundaries as hard as, as they can. Mm -hmm. And you see, the, the Intel one rears its head so flipping well as an example of complacency, right? You know, how, how, they, how they slowly progressed to the point where come 2017, they got caught under the rug and Ryzen just took over from first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen for mobile. And then obviously where we are with, you know, 5,000 series and 6,000 series coming out. This is where I, I, I just tend to worry that a situation like this goes into, oh, it's only one year, but that's, that's where you can be, you can, you can slip up. And I, I know that's, that's just me being a bit of a, you know, I'm thinking too hard into it, but I just worry, right? I just worry because although it makes sense on a business perspective, I just don't, I just don't want it to fall into a rabbit hole. Of, that's their most successful foldable lineup, especially with the flip free and the price drop. If we look at UK, that price drop down to 949 pounds starting, lined it up with the S21 plus and lines it up with the S22 plus. And it made 
it made it such a big difference of, wow, do I go for that one or do I go for that? The choice is not that obvious. Even if you are losing out on things like, you know, a DEX or not the absolute best outright battery capacity and performance. But in terms of just what it stands for as a foldable device where it's near enough the same as your normal 6.8, 6.7 inch smartphone, but it can be more compact, right? And it just fundamentally changes how you use it. Video calls are hands-free because of FlexInge. That lineup needs to be not just protected, but really pushed to be in its final form as close to soon as possible right so although the lack of competition is there i just worry about it in that sense but then if it's not in the design area we've talked about some of the stuff that we know already right internal specifications and how that actually now finally reflects on the fold 4 or the alleged upcoming fold 4 aka i'm team fold i love the fold i'm about the fold all the way through episode 8 we did discuss that it was pretty much meant to be the 8 plus gen 1 and it it, it almost lined up and made a, a lot of sense since Qualcomm officially made that chipset official we talked about the controversy of the fabrication process switching from Samsung's um you know fabrication to TSMC's and the potential gains that come with it even though it is on a similar 4 nanometer process what we are seeing is that the Fold 4 apparently has been benchmarked with it as well. And it's pretty much in line with what we've been seeing before in terms of um, the 8 Gen 8 Plus. I always keep thinking it's the 8 Gen 1 Plus. <laughs> That's what I want to keep saying. It's like, why did you put the Plus too early, damn it? Yeah, it's like right <laughs> in the middle of it. It's, it's just in that weird place. Where every time oh, I read it, it gosh. feels wrong. I'm like, eight plus, yeah. damn it. No, it's, you know, it's just that weird thing. And on, I think the, yeah. the other the other thing with the, the flip and fold is that, you know, these foldable devices aren't the same, like, cookie cutter, you know, like the S22 Ultra. Like, yeah. if you have a slow year with an S phone, you know that, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, they're basically the same the next year everything's you know slightly yes. upgraded but there's nothing mm -hmm. revolutionary that's going to happen in the world of standard smartphones whereas for mm -hmm. all we know a xiaomi uh an oppo could turn around tomorrow and create something that samsung hadn't even considered and yeah. completely blow them out of the water in it from a direction that they hadn't even thought about because these are where mm -hmm. the innovation is happening yep Yep, yep. And and if we if we if we consider just how crucial that is, right? We look at the chipset, we look at the decision making there, we look at other things that we apparently know. Apparently, you know, the battery capacity is meant to be going up from 3,300 to 3,700 milliamps, which aligns it with the smaller base model Galaxy S22, the 6.1 inch. But also the charging speeds are meant to go up from 15 watts to 25 watts, which is you know, very efficient from Samsung, they're 25 watts. We've done plenty of charging tests on it, on the channel, but also capacity. Apparently, 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 and I'm going to keep saying apparently to just manage and tamper expectations, people, right? We just, we just don't know until anything's official, but apparently we should be getting higher capacities now, right? The Fold 4 returning back to the one terabyte days of where it started from, I believe with the Fold 1, I believe the Fold 1 was 1 terabyte. I might be wrong, but I, I can't actually. I think it peaked don't quote out. Me on that. I, I believe so. I'd have to check, but I think, yeah, I think, yeah, because they, it would have been, because I know the, the S20 Ultra did as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely did. And then, uh, you know, the, 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 the Flip is meant to have a 512 gig option. I think this is all to just negate for the lack of micro SD card expansion and how they have, kind of made it a mid-range only at the moment until further notice feature on a hardware level to negate for that because some of the complaints was the fact that the base storage is dropping even on the ultra it's starting 128 gigabytes 128 gigabytes for the flip 128 gigabytes for the fold um well 256 for the fold um but you'd want that to be a capacity increase as well so 
it looks like it's going almost in the same direction of how the traditional standard solid state smartphones, non-moving parts go with their upgrade cycle. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it, but I'm just, I understand it from a business point of view, but like what you're saying where there's other manufacturers, especially when it comes to the fold side of things compared to the flip side of things, are really pushing boundaries in that design form factor innovation side of things, which I think is the right way to go at this early, semi-early stages of foldables, right? It, 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 just, it just feels like it's a bit too soon to be falling into the internal specs bump only, right? What about the camera? What about the usable form factor? What about the crease? What about the bezels? What about the UDC cam? You know, those type of things that really make a difference, right? Because unpopular opinion, I would actually like to see an under display camera for the flip personally. And I'm just throwing it out there. I'm going to pass it back to you on that. But summarizing all of these things that we know in terms of the alleged leaks for the images, the internal specifications for the system on the chip, capacity increases to the battery, storage, collectively, is it good enough for Samsung? Or are they, in the words of Admiral Atbar, falling to a trap that they might not be able to get themselves out of that easily compared to what the competition could bring? I think... Interestingly, the the four, whether it be the flip or the fold, these devices coming up won't be how we find that out. I think the real tr test of that will be a what the competition releases and b how the fives. Because if if they were if it turns out that the 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 flip four and the fold four are just kind of a holding pattern because they have major changes planned for the five, I can let it slide. Mm. But if the five yes. comes out and that's also an internal spec bump, then we have real problems. So mm -hmm. weirdly, I think this isn't the generation that will tell us if the four is bad. It'll be the next mm -hmm. generation when we go, oh, actually, no, it was definitely not okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I kid you not to yet again make another pop reference, right? You've not watched Obi-Wan Kenobi yet, I promise you. That's what episode five of Kenobi is. <laughs> Everything else up to four feels like, okay, we get it for business reasons. And then five is like, this is <laughs> this is like literally screaming off your head, everything we wanted and then some. And it's like, oh my gosh, the finale is, whatever it is, it's just going to tie in so epically well with what Rogue One did to kind of bridge the gap of how the hell do you bridge what happened in episode three and episode four right in that short conciseness and it just becomes epic right i really hope that that is what the fifth generation really is because the fifth generation would mark the start of something that they announced with hcc in 2018 the start of something that they announced in 2019 with the start of 5g and the beginning of their foldable devices yes the hurdles that they went with the first gen yes what they did with bringing out the flip with the flex hinge flip 1.5 with 5g and then flip 3 it needs to really solidify itself in it definitively where once other manufacturers, like let's just say Apple, potentially decide to jump on foldables, that they don't just sweep in and think, oh, once Apple's done it, it's better. It's just, okay, when we think of foldables, it's still Samsung definitively, right? This is where I don't want them to get into that complacency stage where other manufacturers jump onto it. People easily forget that the definitive master of that form factor was not just the creator, but it is just Samsung all the way through, you know? So I think you're right. I think the eyes are really going to be on, uh, you know, the fifth generation. This needs to be a solid stopgap enough, but come the fifth generation, we almost cannot have any more excuses on form factor. We almost cannot have any more excuses, especially on the camera. Like they've got to figure that side of things out, you know? So fingers crossed my verdict is that i guess it will be good enough it will be good enough because samsung are still very impressive on an intangible level of global access you know how they're able to mass produce these products get it to so many different countries get it on all the main carriers of the countries that they're in it is still very impressive to do that most companies still struggle with that kind of 
partner retail carrier relationship. So give them their QLIS for that, that based on that reason, with their excellent trading deals and their ever grown, you know, brick and mortars, you know, retail stores, you know, we love going KX for the experiences that KX brings in Kids Cross London, right? I guess we'll be good enough, but time will tell. Time will tell when 2023 raises his head for the fifth generation. And I think that will be the real truth teller. Any final takes? Yeah, I'm just excited to see these photos and I'm excited to, you know, yep. me and you will be in KX. <laughs> I'm sure yep. I'll make another, I'll make a, what makes the fold fold? <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I agree with you, man. Regardless of these leaks, I, I, I still look forward to announcements. I still look forward to when it's official, and I still look forward to especially getting these products in to really test them. The nuances are always going to be different when you have them in hand. So, yeah, this pretty much wraps up the main core topic, which was just infused with everything. Earlier than expected, alleged leaked images of the design of the Flip 4, what the power and the chipset of the 8 Plus Gen 1 means for the Flip 4, and also what looks like is for the Fold 4 as well, alongside capacity storage increases, RAM and battery and charging, and what that collectively means. And we just hope it's not a trap, and it's just a really good stopgap for what we should be seeing next year. Don't go too far, people. We're going to be transitioning onto the next part of the podcast where we are going to be talking about the fans, the fan edition. And this one is near and dear to my heart just because of what the S20 FE started that potentially, apparently exclusive from what we've been hearing from different sources for SamMobile.com, we might not be seeing an S22 FE. Don't go too far. We're going to have a small interlude, a small water break. We're going to be back to dive in and talk about it. See you in a moment. And we are back and we are on the final stretch of your episode 11 of the Sam Mobile Podcast. Hope you are enjoying it as much as we are. And we're not going to waste much time and pretty much get into talking about the fans. The fan edition device that we should be expecting for 2022 from the S-Series line is apparently based on some exclusive rumors that we've been getting and sources that have been coming through. Might not be seeing it this year. And it really opens up a can of worms and discussion on the state of the fan edition. And if that is really the case, to not make it two years of what this is, it's very, 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 very concerning. And this is something that was pretty much on you know, the Sam Mobile um, website where we, it's actually today as of what we're recording funny enough, on the 15th of June. This is actually something that posted where it just came in and it, it may it may end up being cancelled. This, this just annoys me. This really, really annoys me because this lineup, I know the original fan edition came out of the curse of the Note 7, let's put it that way, that they released a fan edition called the Note Fan Edition in Korea only to kind of combat the image of it because the the... The Note 7 was just so iconic outside of what happened of the, the look, the design, the phone itself was just brilliant. It was just unfortunate. They ended up reducing the battery capacity to like a super, super safe level, but it was only in one place. But obviously the fan edition was revived as this thing in the S20 FE where people really gravitated to it. Like the funky, really bright pastel colors. Love that. The marketing. Love that. The hardware features with the micro SD. Love that. The timing of announcement and release, right? Love that. I mean, like second of October, beginning of like end of September announcement, availability, the price point, what it mirrored, definitively was Samsung's phone of the year. How do we go from that? And I know the pandemic is usually the reason, right? How do we go from that to it being kind of leaked and showcased like June, July, to not even meet in the mark at the end of October, maybe at least the beginning of November, and for it to end up basically being a 2022 device, which again, managed to go to Vegas to go see it and had it beforehand and I've got the device and whatnot. A 2021 FE device ended up being a 2022 device that was only about three to two weeks behind the S22 that ended up being even worse value because the S22 was only about £60 more. Ugh. So now literally just 
it's it's become it's almost like the fan edition is the Titanic, right? It's so iconic because it's just it was meant to be so great. It showed its greatness, and it didn't even make his first trip. Two years, you could not do two years with this fan edition. I don't know how you feel about this man, but I'm I'm just I'm actually annoyed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's frustrating because weirdly VS20 FE was the best S20 in terms of like oh. bang for buck. It had they'd kind of Absolutely. taken features from different parts of the line and brought them all together in one phone. So it was like a little bit worse than the S20 Ultra, but a little bit better than the S20 Plus, while being cheaper than the S20 Plus. It was it was just this like perfect combination where they yeah. discovered the parts that mattered for the users of the S20. And it felt like mm -hmm. it felt like a phone that lived up to the name fan edition. It was a phone yes. that was for Samsung fans. It was the kind of yeah. phone that I was like, if you want a Samsung and you want the best, it was almost the best value for money phone that Samsung made. Yep. It was nearly yep. a no brainer. And it came yep. out at the perfect time. And it was just, it was also just before the, the, the one pluses and everyone else's like oh, lower tier exactly. phones came out and, and yes. the pixel. And what that meant was it was hit, it hit the market at exactly the right time. Mm -hmm. And they had an, I would expect that the FE could be the best seller of any series of phones. If it, came out six six years six months after the original right so if it yep. if the s22 fe came out exactly six months after the s22 line with that combination of features at the right plot price i think every year it could be the best selling phone but they just never seemed able to get that all together yeah it's do you know what's so frustrating i'm going to give some fun analogies to this from cars to food right food wise the s20 fe was the best leftover meal samsung ever made literally it is literally like taking all of the best bits of what you have left over right you, you don't pour much into the r d you've got all the stuff already but you get it you reheat it properly you decorate it when i say decorate it the marketing the approach the presentation the funky colors right the pack, like you do it in such a way where it fills its own, but you know it's the leftover meal. It is literally like the best leftover meal, but with effort. They lost that with the S21 FE in terms of timing, release, and pricing, right? And they did not decorate that phone well. Like one of the feedback I gave them is that, guys, this just feels so boring. Where are the fun colors? Where's the different color ranges? Like, what happened? There's it just lacks that it's its own personality in a way, right? And if we go back to cars, BMW, the M1 Coupe, the M1 Coupe, that little training shoe of a car was such a pop. That was literally the fan edition of the M series for BMW, right? This thing was beating Lotuses. It was beating Porsche Caymans. But it was a parts bin leftover BMW M car, right? Same specs of a, a, as a BMW M3 at the time with the turbo. But it was almost like a shrunken notch. It was just mean. And it had its own, like, I'm trying to be more than what I am. And it was, but it's just a parts bin car, really, you know? And to go from that to this situation where we might not be getting it at all, it's just really disappointing. It's really disappointing because I know maybe Samsung might think that they're struggling to find a place for it, right? But the place for it was perfect. Like what you said, six months after the original announcement, right? The presentation with the packaging and, and, and colors, the marketing vibe of it, right? And also the pricing. And, and, and when you nip it in the bud, all these things and you position it before your competition, it sticks. It sticks before you start making the arguments. Oh, if you if you look for the discounts and it's, it's like we know that, but it's a perception thing, especially like what we discussed before offline that you release a ridiculous amount of product, Samsung, region by region and globally. Your release cycle, your release execution is so important for how 
you perceive that product throughout. Quick reminder, the Note 20, not the Ultra, the Note 20. Another perfect example. And when you do that, it just sticks. And potentially, you might have been able to actually get that phone in a good deal or on a good package, but you just don't think it because you executed it so wrong. It's just basically dead on arrival. And I, and I guess I guess this is just them accepting. Uh, again, we might be wrong. I want to eat my words. I care about the fan edition. But if this is anything to go by, that's just very disappointing. That's just very disappointing. And the, the weird thing about it for me is that the first fan edition did have, I remember it having that like ultra light advertising as well. Not light as in there was yeah. not much of it. Light as in it was like, this is for the fans, right? Because it's, yeah. it's called the fan edition. Like that's the whole point of it, right? They were like, you know, this is for, uh, they pitched it towards like students and people who yep. like didn't have the money not necessarily didn't have the money for like the ultra per se, but you know, they were, they were a lot more conscious about what they were spending money on. The reason I bought the S22 ultra isn't because I think it's the phone that all people should buy. It's because mm -hmm. I'm the tech nerd who needs the fanciest thing. Right. I think, Oh yeah. If I think oh, for yeah. most people, the S22 plus is actually the better phone, but I'm yep. not most yep. people. For me, I was like, oh, I need the Ultra. Same. And I think the you FE the was exactly that. It was the right phone for most people. And they mm -hmm. got that and they really pushed it. And then mm -hmm. they just stopped. And I don't know why. <laughs> yep. 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 You, you, could, you couldn't have said it any better. We, we, we always... We, Again, slow news months and hyperboles, expectations, rumors and stuff. We always stick those disclaimers on there. But I, I just, off the back of what you said before we, we, we talked about, if we, if we briefly go back to the flip four, right? These are, these are telltale signs of just complacency, dropping the ball and just not thinking it matters and getting into that rut, right? Yes, the alleged name is meant to be called a Z Flip 4. You would think it's actually four design revisions or four devices, but it actually is not. We go back, right? Flip 1, Flip 5G, it wasn't the Flip 2, it's the Flip 5G. It was the exact same design, but because people complained about the lack of 5G, it forced their hand to release a 5G model, and we can pretty much call it a 1.5 version of that. And Samsung have done this before they've, where they've skipped names that align products together so it doesn't look like one is older than the other or less inferior. They did that with the Note 7. Again, it was actually meant to be called the Note 6, but it was a Note 7 to line up with the S7 range and S7 Edge within the same year to make it easier. That's what happened here. And if we're seeing that the alleged rumors of the images are of the fourth gen, but still being pretty much a second generation design revision. And then you're seeing that the S22 FE potentially might not make the car at all. Yeah, I, mm, I just hope this is just a stopgap year where stuff like this is not really the case of like indicative behavior of a company that is just so good at doing stuff like this, right? They've proven it many times cheesy corny or not but it can be done but um i mean my final takes is that i'm annoyed if this is if, if this is true i'm annoyed if this is this ends up being true and i will un unfortunately be annoyed if they don't go back to basics and actually get the fan edition released you know at the near that at the start of q4 of 2022 as it should be you know but We'll see. Only time will tell. That's my final takes. Any final takes from you? Yeah, I think it's it's worth remembering that you know at the end of the day, you know we we're upset about this, and I think you know to some extent we have a right to be, but also bringing a phone to market is very complicated, and it at is. the best of times, it's not like a hey guys, I wonder if we make a phone, you know, mm -hmm. and then someone turns around and goes, yeah, let's make a phone. Like, if this isn't a decision that's made overnight, you yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah. no one wakes up one morning and goes, actually, the S22 FE, let's just not bother. There's a yeah. whole procedure and there's a reason that they've decided this is the case. And mm -hmm. we may disagree with it. 
And mm -hmm. it might be, uh, I, what would have ended up happening is at some point, someone went, actually, the amount of investment it takes to make the S22 FE, I think mm -hmm. this isn't necessarily an investment in like the R&D side, but maybe the marketing and the realistically like, the, the, you know, getting it around the world available shipping is really hard right now. Um, mm -hmm. And so obviously they've sat down and gone, this is a, this isn't what we want to do. And as much of mm -hmm. a shame as it is, um, we have to hope that they're doing it for the right reasons. That's the and, ag and again, it has to be, it's right? that weird thing where we can't know if it's the right yeah. reasons. Because for all we know, and obviously this isn't even a rumor, this is me just like saying hypothetically, for all we know, they've decided that the, the base S23 will come in at a price even lower. And so they wouldn't be able to make an S23 FE because, you know, for, for all we know, this is like a 5D chess move that with the information yeah, we have right yeah, now. I but didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Right now, we have to hope it's yeah. right. And I'm not saying that's okay. I'm not saying that's good, mm -hmm. but it's, it's the situation mm -hmm. we're in. That wraps up, you know, the episode 11 of the Sam Mobile podcast. Um, it's been a, it's been a very interesting take in terms of where we are in the state of things. And I, I do believe, especially from the end of July onwards and August onwards, a lot of these things that we are in that kind of rumor buffer stage will become official. And then time will tell where the state of things really, really are into 2023, like what you just gave right there. George, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for, you know, just being a great sport and just being literally the best co-host and super guest at the moment. Um, as always, you will have all the links in the description for all the show notes and articles that we referenced from sammobile.com, as well as George's socials, as well as mine as well. It was a follow. And also as well, if you enjoy this episode and you enjoy what you're hearing on the weekly Sam Mobile podcast, make sure you like, subscribe and turn on notifications. Give us a rating and also write us a review. Give us some feedback and let us know what you would like. And that is pretty much it from us. As we always like to say, stay safe during this time and we will definitely catch you in the next one. See ya. Mm -hmm.